How is Flux proof of useful work going to look for us GPU miners? The Sal KDA Titan timepiece is the first NFT watch ever created. These one-of-a-kind timepieces paired with their NFT authentication provide a revolutionary method to fight back against the counterfeit watch industry. Along with the paired NFT authenticity comes maintenance and history records stored on the Cadena blockchain. Finally, this is the perfect gift to pass down to one of your sons or daughters who take up that crypto family mantle. Check out the Sal KDA Titan timepiece down below in today's video description. What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, a few weeks ago, I sat down with the CEO of Flux, Daniel Keller in a small town in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, actually at a cigar parlor. And one of the topics that came up was Flux proof of useful work. So I thought I'd go ahead and let you guys know what exactly I learned. So what purpose will this serve for proof of useful work? Flux is very big on kind of solving problems or filling a gap on something that needs a resolution. And with Flux's proof of useful work, the main goal of it is to be this massive amount of compute power. And the way that Dan Keller actually explained it to me was Flux will have almost like this marketplace for proof of useful work. But on the flip side of it, it's just gonna be a compute marketplace. And how that's going to look to the outside world, let's kind of dumb it down to real world um, need. And at this point, what it's going to look like is a marketplace where an organization, a group, whatever it may be, can come along and go ahead and request to use some of that compute power. And the example that Dan Keller actually gave, and I think this really makes sense, is everybody really knows what chat GPT is right now. It's this huge buzzword right now with everything going on with AI and it's pretty badass. I've really enjoyed testing it out and using it with things like my YouTube channel recently. And he gave a great example. So many of you guys that have used chat GPT know that it kind of hangs or that, you know, sometimes there it's not available and you have to try back later because it's just being hammered a ton. Well, what this proof of useful work from the team over at Flux will solve is as Dan Keller referenced it, a wetland or an overflow or spillover. Let's say that ChatGPT is going to go ahead and use its traditional compute power that it has. But when it's bottlenecked, when it's full or not, you know, no longer available to take on new customer requests, it can overflow that to something like Flux Proof of Useful Work and have a massive amount of GPUs ready to go to address some of those compute requests. What is this going to look like for us GPU miners? How can we utilize what we have now? And then how do we need to build for the future? So as a GPU miner right now, I have a majority, I'd say about 80% of my mining farm on Flux right now. And that's going to continue and it's not gonna look any different. So the way that Dan Keller had explained it to me as to how this is gonna work, and there's only so much that he could leak or, or provide to me, but he did a really good job of explaining it. So. Let's say I'm sitting here and I'm mining flux on one of my eight GPU rigs. Let's say it's one of my 1070 or 2060 rigs that I have right now. That actually, that my oldest rig right now is a 1070 Ti and 2060 rig on flux. It's one of my original rigs that I actually purchased a lot of those GPUs from Red Fox Crypto just to mine flux over a year ago. But let's say that's sitting right now on flux and it's doing its thing, doing its thing. The way that it was explained to me chatting with Dan Keller is that, and I got some notes here to make sure I have it accurate, is you're mining flux and you're almost placed in a queue. And what will happen is the demand for your compute power will be needed. And so what will happen is you will actually leave the flux network and go to this, let's just call it your proof of useful work network. And your GPU will get used to perform whatever compute is requested. After that's done, It'll return back to the Flux network and continue mining Flux just like it did. But before it does that, you'll actually get paid out in Flux. So let's say you're earning $8 a day on this eight GPU mining rig, which is more reality right now during the bear market. And then your rig, your whole rig, all that compute is requested. It will go to proof useful work. It does its work. And then let's say it comes back 
before it goes back, you're actually going to get paid out in flux. It's kind of like the currency. Um, and let's say it pays me in $4 for whatever that compute was for however long it took. It could take 30 seconds. It could take two hours. So then I could go ahead and check my wallet and I would see a, a separate deposit for that proof of useful work task that I went ahead and completed. There's nothing special that needs to be done, at least as of right now. At the highest level that it was explained was that you're just going to keep on mining Flux. Chatting with Daniel Keller, he let me know that there's going to be a variety of different hardware that will be able to utilize this. Um, and you're going to see things like old GPUs. You know, he made the reference of grabbing those old, you know, four gigabyte or whatever cards out of the closet that you thought were dead and buried. Um, to use your old hardware, to use old servers with like Xenon processors, um, to grab anything and everything pretty much. Their whole point is to like have as much compute available and to get use out of this old hardware, which I absolutely love. I love the fact that we're going to be able to use old hardware or new hardware, but of course it's going to scale. You know, older hardware is not going to reward as well as your newer hardware because it's more powerful. But at least we have a purpose for some of this older hardware. In addition to that, not only is it going to be GPU, but uh, CPUs can benefit from this. And the CPUs don't necessarily have to like be able to mine Flux because you have to remember this proof of useful work is outside the Flux network. And then in addition, like things like FPGAs that they'll accept eventually on this proof of useful work. Not necessarily Flux, they're kind of separate here, guys. Um, but I believe ASICs will not be included, but don't quote me, but I believe ASICs are still going to be kind of the no-no in this situation, which I'm entirely okay with because of just how they oversaturate and decimate networks. So something I learned about is that their goal is to appeal to anybody and everybody, kind of this nice hash mentality, which regardless of how you feel about nice hash, what they're going to have is this Windows application that will allow you to participate in proof of useful work. And he actually explained it really well to say like, let's say you have a computer and in this app, Let's say you have a computer with like a 3080 in it, right? And you got, you got a sweet, uh, you know, processor in it. You could take this app, set it up on the computer. Nothing too crazy. It's going to be nice and easy to do. And you could say, when my computer's idle after five minutes, put it in the queue for proof of useful work. So that if that if your queue comes up and the demand comes up, your machine will be used to do that. And then you'll get paid out in flux. Not mining flux. Just you're you're putting your hardware to use. And it's kind of like NiceHash. NiceHash has these apps that you can go on Windows and NiceHash's whole goal is to appeal to new miners and to make it simple and basic and, and easy. And it really is. NiceHash, you literally load up their app and hit a play button and you're done. And it does everything for you. This is going to be very similar. In addition to that, he had a great example too of saying that like your rig could be, let's say every night at like nine o'clock, you're going to bed. You're very religious by that. Not that I go to bed at nine. I stay up way too late playing video games. Um, but let's say between 9 and 5 a.m., your computer just is always idle. You can set up a scheduler with this app to say 9 o'clock every night, put it in the queue. You could wake up every morning and you could see a little bit of flux that is deposited into your wallet for putting your rig to work. I know a lot of you guys just leave your rigs on, right? Why not earn a little extra flux from it? So I think I ended up with more questions than I got answered from all of this. And it wasn't because of the fact of Daniel Keller wasn't able to tell me anything where he's like, oh, I can't tell it's confidential, stuff like that. It was just like, I walked away from it and went, I have so many more questions. So on some of the questions that come to mind is like, okay, as a miner, um, how do I opt into this or opt out of it? So uh, that kind of went into the same thing of like, is this pivoting between flux mining and proof of useful work that is naturally occurring based off demand? Is it poolside or not? And that was something where there's a little laugh shared about it where he couldn't tell me. So I was like, Okay, really eager to see where this goes and to see what happens. Um, in addition to that, when we talked about uh, flux and parallel assets, do you get paid parallel assets for proof of useful work? Because you're not actually on the flux algorithm or anything, right? Like traditionally you're mining flux with your GPU mining rig and you're mining flux. So you get the parallel assets associated with it, current and future, but when you pivot off of this and go over to proof of useful work, you're just doing a job and then getting paid out in flux as that kind of currency. So curious, my guess is you don't get the parallel assets, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. 
um, which would be really nice and, and eager to know. I think another thing that comes to mind, which a ton of people have hit me up about and questions about is hardware requirements. So Daniel Keller made it very clear when we're talking about our current GPU mining rigs, which open frames or, or server cases and such, GPU risers will be out, meaning you won't be able to do proof of useful work with them. There's almost gonna be a benchmark process to be accepted into proof of useful work, just like you have with flux nodes. And before you get upset about that, you they're providing a compute product um, at a very high level. And so you need to have hardware to support that bandwidth. You need, as, as Daniel Keller said, you need the entire GPU available for that. So your GPUs will run at like 100% uh, in order to maximize that. And a lot of questions came up like, okay, if X1 isn't available, does it need to be X8 or X16? Uh, what PCI version, 3, 4, 5 that, that are needed? Um, we were told that, quote, replace your GPU risers with ribbon cables. If you guys aren't familiar, familiar, um, this is something I looked at a while back that you could have a ribbon cable that then hooks into your GPU. So, and then that goes into your board. It's kind of like an extension of the motherboard, uh, but a rimming cable instead of a USB cable like a GPU riser would be. So we won't know entirely quite yet on those specs, but start thinking about that. And I think what's gonna come into high demand is some of these motherboards that have some of these like a variety of different X16 slots in them may become higher and higher in demand, but I don't wanna recommend going out and just buying anything because they're gonna come out with the specs leading up to right before the test net releases so that people know what type of hardware is going to be required. So you're actually going to get a spec sheet kind of like we do with flux nodes in order to know exactly what we need to go ahead and jump on the test net to test it out. So I'm super excited. I have so many questions like, okay, I have a handful of octo minor cases and minor dude cases and polo minor cases. Will they work? Is this going to add demand back to that server setup? Um, I'm thinking about buying up a few more server cases, I got the GPUs. Is this going to be phasing out of our open frames just from a cost perspective or you know, maybe swapping out motherboards? Those are big questions for me right now when it comes down to hardware. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap things up. That's everything I learned about proof of useful work up till this time. Now, I imagine you guys have even more questions than I do. So post your questions down below. I'm hoping to meet up with Daniel Keller in the near future and bring those to the table and see what type of additional information he can provide to us. If you guys wanna check out that cigar parlor that I talked about, it's actually a live stream. Um, it was about two hours long and it was just about mining and flux and the current state of crypto. Uh, I'll put a link directly down below to it. You guys can go check it out. It was a cool, fun, relaxed stream. We had a few drinks, we smoked some cigars and we talked mining. Feel free to go over and check that out. All right, guys. Well, that is it for today. Thank you guys very much for joining me. I'm hoping to do a future video on future updates that do come out on proof of useful work. And I'll make sure that I keep you guys up to date. If you guys enjoyed this recap, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Today's video is sponsored by the team at Bybit.com. Buying, selling and trading cryptocurrency should not require you to jump through hoops in 2023. The team at Bybit has you covered. Crypto mining enthusiasts now have a platform to transfer their mined crypto to and liquidate it quickly, easily, and on the go. In a situation where you need to purchase cryptocurrency with a credit card or debit card? No sweat. Bybit provides you multiple avenues for purchasing crypto instantly. Where are my crypto traders at? Bybit has an arsenal of features for spot trading, margin trading, copy trading, and trading bots. Currently, if you deposit $100 with Bybit, you'll receive an extra $20 USDT. Check out Bybit today via the link in the video description.